Hi, Kathleen. Thank Hi. you for joining us. So we are here with Kathleen Noonan, who is the CEO of the Camden Coalition of Healthcare Providers. And you have had such a fascinating background. So before we get into some of the questions, if you want to share a little bit about your experiences. Sure. So um, I started uh, my career actually um, thinking I was going to be a psychologist. Really? Yeah. I thought I was going to be a psychologist and work with children. And at some point, uh, it was the late, uh, it was sort of mid 80s in New York, and I was doing a lot of work with kids, especially kids with special needs. Mm -hmm. um, it was the AIDS, HIV mm -hmm. um, uh, crisis, and uh, at some point I decided I wanted to do policy mm -hmm. instead. Um, and so, you know, after college, I went and I worked for a children's advocacy organization, and I was really committed to advocacy and policy, uh, so I decided a law degree mm -hmm. would be a good route. Um, you know, did some corporate law, but knew I wouldn't be a corporate law for, uh, lawyer forever, and really um, made my way back probably, you know, three, about eight years after law school, I made my, my way back into nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And the route you found yourself is the CEO of the Camden Coalition of Healthcare Providers. So that is a nonprofit that is based in Camden, New Jersey, that kind of fills the hole in healthcare where traditional avenues really are, aren't designed to fill. Things like helping patients overcome their social needs and to comply with follow-up care. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you face day to day? Sure, yeah. So the Camden Coalition, as you said, um, was founded in 2002 by Jeffrey Brenner, a, f a family physician in Camden. And it was really a breakfast meeting uh, of, of Jeff and other clinicians who were really frustrated that their patients, mostly Medicaid um, enrolled patients, were ending up in the hospital again and were using the ER for care. Mm -hmm. And they wondered what this was all about. And mm -hmm. so through these conversations, they came together to develop a coalition and one of the ideas that came out of the coalition was that the hospitals um, and the primary care offices at that time did not provide a sort of navigation mm -hmm. that could basically help these patients once they were discharged mm -hmm. figure out how to sort of stabilize um, get connected to a primary care office, stay connected to a primary care office, and then access social services. So that's mm -hmm. that's sort of the idea of how we how we were developed. Okay, and it's great. And so, were was it that patients just weren't aware of that they didn't need to use the emergency room for services, or is it there really was just not any other avenue that they had at that time? Yeah, you know, we have found that there's it's complex, right? We have actually been what we uh, we call what we do complex care. Mm -hmm. And we feel like we've been doing complex care for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not one reason necessarily, right? For some people, it's because they use the emergency room because it's the easiest place to go. Sure. For some people, it's because, um, you know, it, 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 they, find themselves in a situation where they don't have the meds they need and they haven't quite figured out how to call a pharmacy to get meds. Mm -hmm. No, there are just a lot of different reasons. Some people go to the emergency room because they can get a meal, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's just a lot of different reasons why people use the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And so what our care team tries to do is figure out what is driving the patient, mm -hmm. right? What is it that will allow them to get stable in their life mm -hmm. and in a way then that could help improve their health situation. Mm -hmm. And for a patient population that really could use it. Yeah, I mean, our patients are particularly complex. So, mm -hmm. you know, there are, since we started this work, there have been, um, you know, dozens of programs that have cropped up now, really good programs mm -hmm. that are doing care management. Some hospitals do care management now. Some hospitals even have community health workers. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what we find is really important is connecting with the patient, figuring out really what is it that they want to do to sort of help themselves mm -hmm. get better mm -hmm. and then try to help them help themselves get better. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's something um, 
that you know, I think the healthcare system is you know trying to figure out how to do how to keep people healthy after they leave the hospital, which is a huge problem, as you know, re- with readmissions and then that balance between trying to balance length of stay and then the readmissions and that whole game. Yes, and it yeah. sounds like you guys are really focusing not just on blanket solutions, which how can you really find with all these different aspects of care, something that's a blanket solution for everything. But yeah. You guys are really focusing on individual plans for what's going to help this specific person or this specific family. Yeah. I, you know, I would say that, you know, in the beginning, we really thought that it was, po- that it was going to be possible to create what we call a care team, mm-hmm. which is a nurse and a community health worker. Mm-hmm. We really thought that it was going to be possible to wrap a nurse and a community health worker around a patient and help them navigate both back to the health system Mm -hmm. and then to these very fragmented social services. Mm -hmm. We have found that that is not the solution. Um, That really we have to, we, and when I say we, I don't just mean the coalition, I mean all of us that care about this issue and care about these patients really need to think differently about how services are wrapped around people um, in a much less fragmented way, Mm -hmm. right? Too many of our programs have six weeks and you're done, Mm -hmm. or you have to meet this criteria, and if you don't meet this criteria, you can't come into the program. And Mm -hmm. so we are discharging patients who have multiple chronic health conditions, Mm -hmm. other complexities, and then, you know, basically uh, telling them to basically work across eight to 10 um, different services, offices Mm -hmm. to potentially get the care that they need. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're still, we, we, um, we believe that there's still a lot to be done in terms of figuring out how we can sort of seamlessly provide care to the patients that we see. 